Hindus and Muslims march for interreligious peace in New Delhi. In a welcome display of communal harmony on April 24th, Muslims and Hindus joined hands for a tri no, a Tiranga Yatra, a parade featuring the tricolor flag of India in uh, Dahangur, no, Dahangi Puri, Northwest in Delhi. Hindu, Hindus and Muslims, in a collective desire for peace, waved the national flag, the design of which symbolizes courage and growth, as well as unity between Muslims and Hindus. Uh, 100 attendees, with approximately 50 Hindus and 50 Muslims, attended the parade. Celebratory flower petals were thrown on the paraders from the apartment buildings above. Police deployed hundreds of personnel to keep the event secure. Attendees were chanting victory to Mother India or glory to Mother India and slogans about the brotherhood between religious communities during the event. The parade for unity followed violence that broke out during the celebration of Hanuman Jan Jayati, Jan 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 Janyanti on April 16th. Crowds of Hindus and Muslims were seen throwing stones at each other, and at least 23 individuals were arrested. According to India Today, the parade was conducted in the C block area of Jahangir Puri, the same area where the previous violence started. So they went to the place where Muslims and Hindus were throwing stones at each other, but now they're like trying to show that that's not the entirety of India, and they're like throwing flowers at each other instead and trying to bring harmony between Hindus and Muslims, right? In the same place, right? Yeah, exactly. Like we had all this like violence in this neighborhood and now we're having a parade in this neighborhood to show our togetherness. Yeah. If that's, you click on that so Instagram good. post, there's a lot of really good footage. Okay, does it have music? Should I mute it? Uh, no, at first there's like a news lady explaining it a little bit and then the uh, videos. Just days after communal violence broke out in northwest Delhi of Jahangir Puri, now there's a Tiranga Yatra with the, the national flag being carried out for brotherhood. This is Tiranga Yatra as a call for peace just days after that violence broke out. This was uh, primarily being participated in. Uh, by members of both the Hindu and the Muslim community, even exchanging hugs at the Yatra. And clearly it is a bid, as it appears, to bridge the communal divide in the national capital. So citizens coming together, as we can see, senior police officials as well, are there at the location and uh, the national flag, the tricolor, the Tiranga being uh, hoisted by multiple people and being carried in that Yatra and where both communities are appealing for peace. Remember, just about uh, two days ago, there was also a press conference that was conducted uh, in the evening by the Hindus and the Muslims to ensure that communal harmony continues and peace prevails in this area. Let's uh, take a look at some of these visuals coming in from Jahangir Puri. <laughs> All right, so what you're looking at the by lanes of the Jahangir Puri area, remember it was specifically the C block area where the violence had reportedly broken out. There was stone pelting, there was swords being brandished, but now smiling faces, waves and hugs being shown here and seen by members of both community to ensure that the violence can now be put behind and they can move on with complete communal harmony. Uh, clearly a gesture. That is being appreciated. Remember what happened on, uh, on the 10th of April when violence had broken out on the Hanuman Jayanti procession. There was pelting. Now uh, there are eyewitnesses who claim that the songs that were played in the procession were provocative. So there were different eyewitnesses claims. But listen in today, days later in Jahangir Puri, what is the situation like? All right, so the woman there says, uh, and I'll just take a minute to translate, that it's important and we like it, Hindus and Muslims, to live uh, together in peace, in harmony. I live nearby, but I'm very happy to know that uh, there is this attempt and Hindus and Muslims need to lo live in peace together. As you can see here, women and young girls waving the piranga, this yatra being organized, even rose petals being showered.
All right, as you can see, holding are uh, holding hands there in uh, the yatra. The Hindus and Muslims walking together, ensuring that a message of peace and harmony prevails. Uh, I was at that location. Remember, there was definitely a, a lot of eerie calm and communal tensions prevailing few days ago. But today, as spotted by police, it appears that there could be now days of peace and harmony there in Jahangirpuri area. That was so beautiful. Thank you, Suze, for showing this to us. Yeah. Because we need hope sometimes, you know? This is like, there's there's hope, you know? Not not everything is bad, you know? Yeah, so, I think yeah. I'm getting an echo. Um, I think there it's really Fix important it. because, um, like, we unfortunately cover a lot of really bad things that happen in India, like most of it. And um, I think we do get some good news out of India, but oftentimes we can't cover on the show because, frankly, like, it, it doesn't um, – good news just doesn't get – good engagement. Like if, no matter who you are, good news doesn't get good engagement, but I think it's important and we should be responsible for showing the other side of things. Right. Like yes. I think it's really easy to, for someone to become extremely biased or even become bigoted when only presented with really negative views and, or just cynical, just throwing up your hands and saying, you know, this is what we are resigned to essentially. And I don't think, um, that, it, it should be that way. So I, I did want to show some really good news to our audience and because I think that's some the right thing to do. And also this was just so, so nice and clear the fact that this, you know, this area was affected by violence so recently and this is how the community responds is so positive. Like we want to reward people for good behavior, right? We want to incentivize good behavior. And we do that partially by lifting up examples of this and saying, yes, we want more of this. This makes this like encouraging it, you know, celebrating it as much as possible. It was so awesome to see like everyone throwing flower petals and um hugging, just holding hands like you're my fellow citizen. We share this country together. We can we can wave our national flag together and say, yes, we are both citizens under this flag. Um, I think that that's very positive. Interestingly, I was looking into kind of the background of a, a tri Tiranga Yatra, which is the the kind of tricolor parade. And it seems like traditionally this has been used by the BJP as a nationalist thing. I don't know if um People can correct me on that if they want, but that's kind of what I found. Um, and, you know, I was thinking, like, if th this display that we saw in New Delhi, like, this is the kind of, like, positive civic nationalism that I want to see. Like, if even if this does have a more nationalist bent saying, oh, glory to Mother India and all this kind of stuff, like, um, I think... It, it there can still be positive aspects to it saying yes we share this nation together let's make this nation great together let's let's um look out for our fellow citizens not no matter what community they come from um i i don't yeah what what do you no, think about that well i mean i don't want to like okay so there's only certain types of nationalism that we're against there are types of nationalism that it makes a lot of sense and has a lot of utility, right? Especially nationalism that brings people together and unite them together rather than rather, nationalism that is used to create enemies. We're against that form of nationalism, but nationalism that makes people feel like they're part of the team, that they're working as a group together to build something that works for everybody. Um, that is like, that is what we just saw right now. So, you know, um, but um, I, I, I do want to, highlight some comments because a lot of okay so one thing is interesting because you know i'm hoping like eventually more people will be included right because it's good that you know muslims in india they want um we want to make sure that they're not otherized and they feel part of india but you also have to be uh, conscious of not thinking like okay so india is muslims and hindus because there are other people there too, right? Like there are a, whole, a lot of atheists. And while I was thinking that, um, somebody I saw somebody holding a sign of uh, Dr. Am Ambedkar, right? And I'm like, well, they're saying these are Hindus and atheists, but I, I don't think that guy that is holding that 
I don't know, like Hindu. I, I mean that. I mean he's he was in Hindu, right? No. Um, I'm you know so <laughs> I mean he was very anti Hinduism specifically, mm -hmm. right? So it's not it wasn't just Hindus and Muslims, you know. It's also people who are like other people as well. I think like maybe you know secularists or even atheists there as well. Like at least the people who are holding the sign of Ambedkar. Like, That's I'm hoping, not necessarily like, as, the case. Yeah, maybe. Ambedkar is widely maybe. celebrated across communities. I know, I know, but like at least, um, uh, yeah, I know, but people who are celebrating him, they think like you could be Indian beyond being Hindu or Muslim. You could be a Hindu who celebrates Dr. Ambedkar, but if you're somebody who celebrates him, you think like you you probably are somebody who, who doesn't think like that you need to have a Hindu identity to be part of India. You know what I mean? Even if you yourself are a Hindu. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're celebrating, you know. So I, I, I just, it was just so great to see some somebody holding <laughs> the picture of him over there. On big, and uh, on Bedkar's principal values were liberty, fraternity, and equality. Yes, exactly. And this is, and he's one of the, arguably one of the founding fathers of modern India, isn't he? I don't even think that's an argument. I think I, that I don't. Yeah, that's one hundred percent true. Like I don't even yeah, think that's so, an argument. He like so, drafted the constitution. Like <laughs> yeah, I know. So so given that he's like w one of the founding fathers of modern India, it's amazing how so many people think like India is based on Hinduism when the founding father is like anything but. Um, and he is somebody who's so widely... who actively rejects Hinduism. Yeah, exactly. So, and some, and some, this nation. Yeah, somebody who's so widely celebrated. And again, it's amazing how so many people think that we're anti uh, Indian when we're celebrating the founding father of modern India um, and somebody who's so widely celebrated in India, right? Um, okay, so to read some comments. Um, sweetie is saying, wow, something good is happening in Delhi. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, ABC is saying flowers instead of stones and bulldozers. Yes. I think this is actually an important thing to highlight because this is around the same time that there was all that um, violence surrounding Ram Navami, the celebration of Lord Ram. This festival where there was violence in Delhi was for Hanuman. And to see people really turn it around and try to come together was awesome. Um, and Bengali Hindu is saying, I hope ordinary Hindus join them, not some activists. Um, I can't really speak to who both. was in the crowd, but why not both? I, why yeah. Bengali? Why why are you this thing activists? Activists are the people at the front lines trying to make a country or a place a, a better. They do like, hard I work. I you know we need activists. Like you know I don't know what it, why why is it anti activist hate? But yeah, continue. Um, I oh, I. Blank name is saying this is good, but this is kind of a facade to hide deeper social problems. Maybe I'm being cynical. Okay, so the deeper no, it's not hiding it. It's trying to address it. It's trying to tackle it. I mean, how is how do you think it's trying to hide it when it's is indirect? Like something bad happened, and this event is trying to. It's not hiding it. In fact, it's bringing attention to it. So nothing is being hidden. It's trying to correct it. But yeah, I mean, even if even if you think the correction is small compared to the problem that we have, well, because if a problem is big, you can't just ignore it because the people who are starting to address it are smaller in comparison. Because you have to start somewhere, right? But yeah. Um, maybe he meant like not just the communal problems, but like economic problems that give rise to these communal problems overall. I don't know. Um. Uh, then but he agrees. Okay. <laughs> Forever Stormy is saying, "On bed, Kirk gives hope to India, even in death." True. Yeah. Simply, Baba Sahib. People, yeah, Ambedkar. Yeah, people are like when they saw the Ambedkar's picture, like every like people in the live chat were like sending hearts and they were happy. So, see, our uh, our community likes him. Yeah, go on. Yes, as they should. Uh. Oh, and then Forever Stormy is giving some interesting facts, saying the BJP and its parent organization, RSS, rejected the tricolor for decades. They appropriate it now. They have their own saffron banner of hate. That's what I find very interesting, because obviously they have the BJP flag with a little orange lotus on it. Um, and 
it's of course they would reject the tricolor because the tricolor will there's different people say that there are different meanings for the different colors so traditionally the saffron represents like the courage of india the white represents peace and then like truth in dharma because that's also the same row that the the dharma wheel is on and then the green row represents like fertility growth also, also like auspicious nature of things but then people also say well saffron represents hindus muslims is represented by the green and the white represents the peace between them in the middle and so no that's the white represents us atheists and secular <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so, so i so can that, see why uh people are atheists hyper of india would oppose that atheists, atheists of india and everybody else in india who's not a hindu or a muslim claim the white color of indian's flag that would be you okay so claim it that's the white part uh, and white uh, is a neutral white is a neutral color so it's actually pretty base you know that's that could be the atheist symbol but yeah go on and katie is saying also the hindu hindu nationalists are also trying to appropriate ambedkar and bhagat singh for other among other atheists as, as Hindus. Yeah, this is really interesting. And you can always tell because Baba Saheb will be presented in saffron, a saffron suit, and Bhagat Singh, instead of his little, I don't know how to describe, it's almost like a fedora. Instead of his fedora, he'll have like a wrapped saffron turban on. And I'm like, oh no, this is some nationalist nonsense. Um, uh, and, oh, Katie is saying the same thing about how the RSS hated the tricolor. Um, uh, Katie is saying Ambedkar hated both Hinduism and Islam, I think uh, more so anti-Hinduism because of the caste system. Yeah, this, this is true. He also had very stark criticisms for Islam as well. He was not holding back. You know, I don't think most people outside of India know that the fan, the, the person that who wrote the draft for the constitution of India was anti-Hinduism. <laughs> like, I don't think a lot of people outside of India would be shocked about, uh, shocked about that. <laughs> like, they, yeah, okay, but go ahead. Misha is, you know, just saying wise words, Armin. Um, I had to hide it. Yes, that's important. <laughs> Thank you. Pluto is saying, Susanna said, Baba Saheb, I love you so much, Susanna. <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know like baba saheb is a, a very affectionate name given to ambedkar um i'm actually thinking of getting like a vintage ambedkar um poster for my my room here uh Ooh, you should yeah do like that. like yeah. vintage authentic it's really cool um uh shake said the white represents the rest of the religions and the wheel represents Buddhism and atheists too. I've always heard that the wheel represents the wheel of Dharma and how there must always be change because stagnation brings death. Well, the wheel of Dharma is a symbol of Buddhism. That's it's also one true. of the symbol. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so given yeah. that stagnation brings death, I hope that India continues to allow itself to progress forward um, into a great nation. I think India is an incredible civilization. And um, yeah. I don't I have, have a thing. Oh, oh go ahead. <laughs> Doravet is saying that's good trivia to have in your back pocket, though. <laughs> Did you know the person that wrote the Constitution of India hated Hinduism? <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> that is it is okay um but okay so just just to defend him he hated hinduism but he wasn't intolerant towards hindus okay because his major problem so a lot of people are like oh wait a minute he, he was anti-hindu no in fact he was pro-hindu because he was protecting the reason why he was against hinduism it was for the sake of Dalits and lower caste people, which are happen which happened to be Hindu. So his hate for Hinduism was because he was pro Hindu. Okay. He wanted to see less people suffer because of its harmful teachings. That's exactly. a very loving thing. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, so oh, Bengali Hindu is like I think is the wheel of wheel is Ashoka. Ashoka Chak. 
chakra, not Buddhism. Wait, so the wheel that is in Buddhism, is that a different wheel? How could you tell? Do the, the, is the designs of the wheel different? And there like, are oh, different that... designs, but it depends. Because mm. the, so, there's so much interplay between Buddhism and Hinduism. I get, it gets confusing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, PK is saying he was against the ideology, not the people. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And here, somebody saying Ashoka was Buddhist. For, um, okay, yeah. Maybe the design is like uh, different in Hinduism and Buddhism. I don't know. Anyways, Susie, for the next news, you're sharing the screen. Oh, you're saying a second. Waiting for a second. Susie is finding it. You put me on the spot. <laughs> oh, Ashoka, people are saying Ashoka took it from Buddhism. Which, which is weird because, you know, Buddhism takes a whole bunch of, takes everything from Hinduism. And then Hindu is like, oh, it's a nice religion you made out of our religion there. Um, let's take some of your religion. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we like, how, we like what you did with Hinduism. M uh, maybe like take some of your symbols and bring it back here. It's, yeah. <laughs> Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below. 